Hey, Foot Clan, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast is proud to partner with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital this season. Together, we can help end childhood cancer and ensure families never receive a bill from St. Jude for treatment, travel, housing, or food, because all a family should worry about is helping their child live. One dollar of every Ultimate Draft Kit sold will go directly to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital to support its mission, finding cures, saving children. Hey, this is Wayne from the 2K all in Fantasy League in Suzhou, China, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in once again. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. A tip of Mike's cap to all of you. It's very uh, gentlemanly. Yeah, that no, tip. that was uh, that was the very respectful. That was I just hit a grand slam. Yeah, mm. rounded the bases. Yep, went back to my own dugout. But the people were they, just insatiable. They needed to see my face again. I came out and I said, thank you, one and all. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> so... Patrons of this ballpark. I'm, <laughs> I'm so amazed. <laughs> I was just going to let you keep going because the fact that you comprehend things that happen in baseball Oh, makes come me, on. I've, I was a baseball fan in a different life. <laughs> so you take the cap off, you shake yes. it, or you just give the, you give the I'm, tip. See, yeah, that's, I'm that's a, a, I pull it down. That's where you're wrong. You're taking the cap off, that's baseball. The tip of the cap, that's... That's no, a no, ten no. gallon cowboy you can do hat. Both. Yeah, where well, you're you're saying, "Ma'am, <laughs> howdy, partner." Howdy, partner. See, when you take the the cap off, like if I were to take the cap off, like right now, you would see. <laughs> no, put, a, put it back on, Mike. <laughs> there's a reason I'm wearing a ball put cap. Put the cap on. Are you starting to panic? Because what what happens is, is occasionally on this show, Mike will have a hat on, and I know that if he has it on for more than two days, I know exactly what's happening. Yes, it is Hat Week. Yes, and that means that Mike has a countdown to his next haircut. And he's just committed to the hat until that time. My but, hairstylist left me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you're in trouble now because you told me your hairstylist is gone. <laughs> Guys, it like, and a week has gone by and you've still got the beat comb on. It's going to be two months. It will go on and then I'm just going to come up with a shaved head. So See, I, some people, I gave up. I couldn't. <laughs> oh. I couldn't figure it out. You won't go back to the man bun. You'll go to pure shaved <laughs> hey, head. May maybe some uh, local super stylist will reach out. Oh, take care that's of, what take you're care doing. I, it's very particular the way that uh -huh. I, I get the hair. I have no doubt about that. <laughs> Welcome into the show. Today we have a great episode for you, getting your fantasy team ready to rumble for 2019. We have a little bit of, uh, a little bit of ADP fun in store for you today. We're going to look at the average draft position of, of a number of players and uh, do a little ADP price check. Ooh. And uh, we don't know exactly where these players are going. I mean, obviously, we're, uh, we keep up with it, but Brooks has put the up-to-the-moment average draft position on a number of players. We're going to try to guess where we think they're going, whether we think that's a good value, where we have them ranked, and we'll talk through all of that on the show today. Be sure to visit the show over on Twitter. Where do they find us, Mr. Moore? At the FF Ballers on Twitter. That <laughs> nice. way I do know. Yeah. I got a little scared for you. Yeah. I wasn't sure you were ready. This is show 723. If he doesn't know our Twitter handle by now, uh, well. You will never, <laughs> ever, ever know me. <laughs> <laughs> find us on YouTube. Watch the show. Subscribe. Click the bell. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, ad free on Stitcher Premium. You can listen to us everywhere for free. It mm. is fun. All right, here's the quick question of the day. Mike, Jason, here we go. Justin in Tennessee. There are a couple of teams in my dynasty league, and their trade offers are, well, they're just not very good at all. Hate that. Yeah, we know those people. Uh, one of them I know very well. <laughs> I look at him in the mirror every day. What's a good, nice way to get people to actually send meaningful and decent trade offers, or do I just need to keep declining them and hope that they get the hint? 
Oh, so, you gotta you gotta hit them back with something worse. That's, yeah, that's, that's the, my go to. That's, that's what you do. That's look. I'd like Dalvin Cook and Juju Smith Schuster for Larry Fitzgerald, and it sends the message. It says we can both offer stupid trades. <laughs> Why don't we talk about something real? Now that, that can backfire, though. Certainly, you can burn because a bridge. They, no, I know they can. Yeah, somebody that delusional, if you send that offer. They'll be like, oh, so you want to trade Larry? Let's get us talk. Let's talk about Larry. They if, might not get if, it. If that offer enticed them mm -hmm. to Larry, I would say, yes. Yes, <laughs> I, I do. Let's talk. It, it, you know, I, I mean, the reality is you're not going to trade with someone on a bad offer. So you have to say something. Just quietly rejecting, 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 and constantly getting bad offers is never going to get a trade to go through because the, it, the good offer isn't going to come. Very few good trades come by leaning on the in-platform system only. You don't get a lot of great trades done by just sending an offer and waiting. That's why when we tell you about how to build a league the right way with the right people, we always say, hey, look, build another communication system into that. Got to be able to DM. Yeah. I mean, Sleeper does a good job of that in-platform, better communication. But, you know, we, we've also suggested go create a Facebook group, do whatever it takes to uh, – I see. I, I'm gonna bring something up here. I haven't even used it. I hear there's an app out now. Have you heard about this? It's called uh, Marco Polo. I have. You not, ever heard of that? I, I I've know heard the of the game. game. Yeah. I know nothing about this app. Someone showed it to me the other day. This is not a sponsor. I this app might be horrible for all I know. What are you doing? But this app it lets you do group like video texts back and forth, and you can do them as a group, so your whole league can be leaving back and forth. It's like text messaging, but with videos. Hmm. Well, something okay. like that might be fun. You need to be able to have some context to shape the offer is what I'm saying. Slack is another good yeah, option. Yeah. I know we've got some of our leagues in there. So I, if I wanted to encourage better trades, I would get on the horn with them in one way or another and say, look, I'd love to do a trade with you, but this is hogwash. I used to be the uh, send the, the terrible trade offer back. I've just, I'm old and I don't care anymore. <laughs> so I, so I, just, I just reject them, but... I have had people where it's just it's garbage, 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 garbage. Oh, hey, look, yeah, trade's done, and then and then when I accept it like immediately because I I know I want to do the trade, that's very funny because that's when the DMs oh they're to not come. happy about that's that. That's when they come in and be like, wait a minute, you always reject all my trades. Why did you accept this trade? What have I done wrong? And then you just cackle like a maniac. Now, now there is also the world where I I think that. The majority of people who make bad trades to start are uh, maybe not a majority, but there is a, is a good percentage of people that when they're making bad trades, it's because they're going, I'm going to finish there, but I don't want to start with this trade offer. Right. right. So like I'm going to start a little worse so I can finish and then it just gets rejected. So I recommend tr offer a trade that can be accepted. Don't offer a trade that has to be negotiated. But you can argue on the other side of that that. If you receive a bad trade, maybe that's just a starting point for a negotiation. Send a counter back that you like. I like where Mike's head is at. The other person should feel real self-conscious about the fact you accepted the <laughs> trade. I like it when somebody goes, wait, what, huh? You said yes way too quick. I want to take it back now. Um, you heard it at the top of the show. The Ultimate Draft Kit is here. I have a couple of quick things to say about that before we get into the news and the ADP price check. Number one, thank you. Thank yes. you to everybody who pre-ordered the Ultimate Draft Kit. Thank you for all the feedback. Uh, thank you to the team here, Brooks, Jeremy, Josh, Rob. Jason. Uh, Jason Moore. Jason Moore. Right. No, the team that put this thing together. And look, we're listening to your feedback. I especially want to thank everybody who's reviewed the app, the brand new app on Android and iOS, which is the companion. Um, uh, it, was, it was brought to my attention that this is bringing your toilet time to a whole new game, oh. uh, a whole new level, because you can now browse the ultimate draft kit in the convenience of the can of your underpants. <laughs> Wait, in your underpants? Wait, wait, do you take yours all the way off, Mike? When you go, <laughs> yeah. when you when you sit down, you go uh, all you, the way. You mean you let the doo doo <laughs> hit the water? <laughs> do you do you clear the entire? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> generally speaking, all the way. Just, Wait, do you toss your you toss it all into the corner of the room? Oh, see, we're no we're, pants around the ankles. We're oh, you thought I left them on? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was. The I joke. thought there was like a uh, a cheese mesh situation <laughs> happening. Oh, 
Move it along. Forcing it through. How dare you? No, I have those uh, those old style pajamas with the the trap door. Oh, the butt flap. The no, trap. The butt he, back flap. He just takes his down to right above his knees. <laughs> it's just like this is enough. It's efficient. Yeah, I don't want to expend more energy than I need, and neither do you. So the ultimate draft kit and the app. You can get it at ultimatedraftkit.com. And as you heard at the top of the show, $1 of every Ultimate Draft Kit sold goes directly to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We've partnered with them this season. It's an important mission that they have. We want to contribute to that. Uh, and that goes uh, part and parcel with the live shows that we're doing as well. All the VIP tickets went to St. Jude. And then in Phoenix, uh, the whole take, everything. All the ticket sales in Phoenix are going straight to St. Jude. If you want to get a ticket to go watch the show live, BallersLive.com. Come out and see the show. Have fun with us. It'll be a party, I promise. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, let's start with uh, this. Rams general manager Les Snead said Gurley will not play. That is, Todd Gurley will not play in the preseason. He says he doubts we'll see Todd in the preseason, which simply means... That, <laughs> that there's the, a problem. The state of mind that you're in now is the same one you'll be in going into week yeah. one, and it's the one that's going to probably permeate <laughs> through the whole off season with this weight. It's. Oh. I mean, I, I'm I'm upset with this as the dynasty owner in our main dynasty league of Todd Gurley. I thought I was buying him cheap this off season. Nope. Yeah, you could have bought him now. Oh, I'm trying, trying to sell him. I'm trying to sell. I I won't have Todd Gurley on. Hard, I can't imagine that I'm going to play in a league where I'm going to be the one willing to take that pick because, you know, I feel like right now, I don't know, back of the second. I was going to say, let's let's get like it. That's, that's if this is a my footballer's ADP price, price check. check. It, so let's say you are a, you're right around the middle of the first round. and Not a chance there. So well, just hold on. So here's the scenario. You got Melvin Gordon with your first pick. Okay. Now it's coming back to you off of the turn. And for me, it's like those – there's like Juju and Travis Kelsey are kind of seeming it, it, ADP-wise. They fit right together. They both go right off – they go right before you. Okay. The allure that that's of a- the start of Melvin Gordon and Ton Gurley. Sure. Middle of the second, if the other – aforementioned players like Juju like I thought you were going to say it was Juju Kelsey and and Gurley who would you pick and I would have picked no Juju. no those two are gone yeah I mean that's, I mean that's going to be oh, that is just going to be a dead trap. cap what the dead cap hit for Gurley would be in 2019 <laughs> what if they cut it like right now 34.85 million dollars yeah, he's only 24 next years, years old next year's dead cap 25.6 million dollars he's got a ton of money he's great his deals through 2023 45 million guaranteed. There will become a point because, look, he's not going to play in preseason. The doubts will persist. Daryl Henderson will flash in preseason because he's great. And there will become, there will, there's going to come a point where I'm going to have to take him. (laughs) I'm going to have to take him. I mean, this is not a, everybody out there. This is not a situation where, let's put it this way. Gurley in full workload mode was not kind of number one. He was so far and away number one that it was not even touchable. It was another stratosphere. Even last year, another stratosphere with missing time. So that tells me that there is the world where he's a great value because he dropped so far, the the news is so bad, and a Gurley with a lower workload on that offense is still a top three guy. Yeah, I mean... If he's healthy. (laughs) If he's the fifth pick... In the draft, he's a value if he ends up getting used the same way, and they're just you know wanting to not do the wear and tear in the off season and in the preseason and that. But I think what we have to be honest about is the actions of the team, not the words, but the actions. Right. The only actions we have seen now are them r- matching uh, Malcolm Butler's offer, going hard in the draft after Daryl Henderson, making sure that there are other running backs there, and then now looking to rest them in the preseason it's uh, there's there is a real problem malcolm brown this you you threw me so off when you went with the malcolm butler did i say malcolm you did i was like hold on hold on that's not his name they're moving him to running back so psyched out right now all right yeah we got there they didn't feel the need to go bring cj anderson back 
they leaned on Malcolm Brown, uh, despite the productivity of Anderson. They have to hedge. They have to con- control this narrative. And at this point, you're not going to cut the guy no matter what happens. So it's just going. This is just going to be the story all off season. Yeah. And the ADP people want to deal with it. It's going to go down and down. Um, all right, let's talk about the Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy. He insists Damian Williams is the team starting running back. There is no running back by committee. Oh, oh, I. Oh. He said Damian Williams is our starter. We expect him to excel in that role. Oh. I did move Damian Williams. Oh, all right. After this report, not every bit of hype is worthwhile. Uh, he moves me emotionally, but he was a little bit low to begin with. He moved up a little bit with the reinforcement here. Um, we'll see what happens. See, what's funny to me the is the ceiling is high. Is you're talking about two completely different situations, but Damian Williams and Todd Gurley could go right next to each other. Yeah, and who do you want, Mike? <laughs> That's a great question. I, you're on the clock. Oh my god! There's only two players left in the NFL draft. season. Starts tomorrow morning. <laughs> tomorrow morning, the game. Oh, I guess Gurley. Chiefs versus Rams tomorrow. I, Who are you taking? I guess it's Gurley, but it's yeah. Like what's bananas about that is two very different situations, but both of them, at least to me, could finish as top five running backs. Like that's the ceiling for Damian Williams. It if is he, if he maintains the starting job, which that's. That's the huge bugaboo for Damian Williams is will he be the starter come week eight? And used like a starter. Right. It's one thing to be the starter. It's another thing sure. to be used like a starter. That's the thing we just don't know because we haven't had a season plus of Damian Williams excelling. Bears tight end Trey Burton will miss the offseason program after undergoing sports hernia surgery. Never good. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, we got one of these. Mediocre signing of the week. That's a big drop. Uh, the Jags have signed wide receiver extraordinaire. Slash QB. Slash free agent now no longer. Slash. Terrell Pryor. <laughs> Dumpster oh. fire. Man, Terrell Pryor, you burned so bright. What, is, what was his 2017 footy award, Brooks? I think he had the poopiest pants, That's right? That's the poopiest pants. Yes, yeah. sir. Oh, well. I mean, what could have been? It doesn't matter. Well, the the good news is this makes the wide receiver core for the Jacksonville Jaguars very clear. Uh, <laughs> it really helps open things up, and, mm. and right now you know exactly whether it's going to be Terrell Pryor, or D. Chris Conley, or Chris Conley, yeah, right. or um, you know Marquise Lee. Did you, guys, did you see this news today, Jason, about uh, Humphreys turning down the Patriots on their offer? And the I fact did that, not see that. Yeah, That's, he he came out and basically said, "Look, Brady's the goat." But he's no Mariota. It'd be, <laughs> Mar- it'd be great. Yep. Uh, he'd be great to play with, but who knows how long he'll be there. I mean, that's basically he's what gonna he He's going to be there longer than Mariota's going to be in Tennessee. That was his reasoning? That's what he said. Oh. Yeah, he came out and said... Um, let, let, here's what I would respond with. And what was their offer? I would say, how much money compared to... Yeah, Tennessee to what- gave him way more money. That's right. got to be that's, the truth. That's fine. Oh, he I mean, said, Tom uh, Brady would be great, but uh, look, I, I really believe in the Titans. He the, said, "Does the money so have ma- to do anything with that?" Look, I think the Titans are a good organization. All right. Answer the question. <laughs> it was a four-year deal. Who knows how many years he's got left? There's a lot that goes into it," said Humphreys. Brady, Pronounce on the other the hand, dumb is freeze. Pronounce the dumb freeze. <laughs> oh, oh. Dude, I mean, just, I just. What would the, the height? Truth. What just would say, the height be like for Humphreys going to? Oh, New I, I, I would have gone too uh, too high on the hype. I mean, would I, you? I, I honestly, even with Edelman, <clears throat> or is or is that the reason that Edelman got the extension? It's because they were spurned by right. Adam Humphreys. No, I mean, I it, you know, it's just he's got a good skill set. Adam Humphreys is a quality wide receiver. If, if you put that on the field with Tom Brady, I think you, you'd you find a little bit of excellence there. But <laughs> I don't think you'll find it with Mario. Tip your cap to him at the end of the day. I mean, you can say, like, it, it, was, it would be fun to be a Patriot, but, like, Tennessee gave me an offer I couldn't refuse. Exactly. What if like, they didn't? That's that's you owning up. Oh yeah, but that's yeah. you owning up that yes, it was money, and so what? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. This, this right. is my job. <laughs> All right, that was today's news and notes. We're gonna get into the ADP price check. Be sure to switch to the Sleeper app for Dynasty Keeper, Redraft leagues. Great platform. Download it today. 
And we want to say thanks to today's show sponsors keeping this podcast going. This Father's Day, give dad a gift packed with Omaha steaks. Yeah. Mm. I got my package already. I got mine. Ain't not much of it left. (laughs) I have uh, grilled most of that up already. You can go to omahasteaks.com and enter the code FANTASY in the search bar. You get 74% off. That's probably what the Patriots wanted to get Humphreys for, (laughs) 74% off. That's the Father's Day Steak Fix gift package, a $235 value for $59.99. I can tell you, if you're searching for that Father's Day gift, this is what he wants. Mm -hmm. Order now. You get two tender filet mignons, two bold top sirloins, two savory pork chops, four Omaha steak burgers, four massive gourmet jumbo franks, four crispy chicken fried steaks, all beef meatballs, four premium chicken breasts, four caramel apple tartlets. Those are the best. A packet of seasoning and four bonus burgers. Order now. Go to omahasteaks.com and type the code FANTASY in the search bar. omahasteaks.com and type FANTASY in the search bar for the Father's Day Steak Fix Package. <laughs> Get long room. I want to thank, hey, it's, check it out. It's a new sponsor. Their name is Podcoin. And did you know that you can actually get paid just for listening to podcasts? I didn't know that. It might sound insane, but it's true. With a new free app called Podcoin. Here's how it works. You listen to podcasts and you earn Podcoin while you listen. Then you turn that Podcoin in for gift cards at places like Amazon or Starbucks. Or if you want, you can even donate that Podcoin to charity. The more you listen the more you earn. Download the PodCoin app right now on iPhone or Android and use our code FOOTBALLERS. You'll get 300 PodCoin just for signing up. And if you listen to uh, listen enough, you can get a cappuccino at Starbucks or an Amazon gift card on us. So listen to this podcast or all others on PodCoin. Sign up with the code FOOTBALLERS to start earning today. It'll change the way you listen to podcasts. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Mm. I didn't remember what drop that was, so that's. Very I like that one. I've, very I've, special. It's it's uh, regal. It's majestic. It's like Humphreys on the Patriots. It's gonna have a that well, has a little, a little bit, bit of excellence ex- in there. <laughs> Just, Just a, little a little bit of excellence. All right, let's start with Bills running back, Lashawn McCoy. Where do you believe his average draft position is right here, right now? It's not like seasons past for Lashawn McCoy when he was the darling of fantasy owners. So. Um, where do you guys think he's going right now? I feel like people are wise on McCoy this year. Yeah. In the sense that he's been a big name and he's been a, a true workhorse back. He's on a team that, you know, there's a narrative that says he's actually going to be a really good pick this it's, year. He's still the starting running back. Sure. That's what I mean. He's And, and the Bills, what do they want to do? They want to run the ball. And then they remember what he did last year which was putrid. They remember his age, his mileage, and they go, he's done. Like, is LaShawn McCoy done, or is he mediocre? I mean, like, I don't yeah. see a world where he's a great running back. So I'm going to guess ninth round. It's It definitely looked like the wall hit last year because, I mean, that was that was his worst year by a lot. He's never been under four yards a carry until last year when he was at 3.2 and he just he was off the field all the time I don't know if there was an injury situation that we were not privy to but everything about uh, about his usage just went way down and, and it looked rough for ADP I'm I'm with Jason I think that he's still a starting running back that it has the, the potential to be a three down type of a player he has that skill set so I'm going to stick him in the eighth round I'm going to go Eight oh four. Okay. What did, I said nine. nine. I'm gonna go n- nine oh one. Right. His current average draft position, and I am not guessing myself because I cheated on this one. I had already seen McCoy. Eight oh eight. Oh, In eight oh eight. Kick drum. What's funny is we have him as our consensus running back thirty nine. That's where he's going. Eight oh eight is the is running back thirty nine. Wow. Um, All right. Now, That's you fun. two have a much higher than I do. My concerns with McCoy, you, you talked about it with the girly context. It would be easy for me to say, hey, we're not looking at McCoy the right way. This is another Lamar Miller situation. We're just burnt from last year. We need to treat him the, as the respect of the starter. But you said listen to the team and the team's actions. The team went out and spent a third-round pick on Devin Singletary. 
They went out and signed Frank Gore. They went out and signed TJ Yeldon. There is some uh, adjustment being made by the team, t- enough to the point where, Mike, you believed LaShawn McCoy probably wasn't even going to be on the starting right. roster. So for I still me, think that's possible. I have him at running by 52. I'm discounting his Lamar Miller ability this year because I don't think the workload's going to be there. And if you take the workload away, the inefficiency last year, I do think he hit the wall. So that's how I'm weighing in on that one. I think if he has the workload, he's still going to be bad. When I look at, okay, who would I rather have this season? LaShawn McCoy or Peyton Barber? I would probably go McCoy. But listen to what I just said. Did you say that? I would probably go McCoy over Peyton Barber. I would and, not, yeah. man. I'd be and, going Barber. Exactly. That, but that This is the point I'm making. So Barber, I see his value because he's in double-digit rounds, or at least that's where I assume he is or should be. Um, he, you know, one of those super late stabs at a starting running back. I don't see a world where even with the workload, LaShawn McCoy all of a sudden gets his yards per carry back, his touchdowns up, his, you know, he's, he's super efficient. The mileage on him as a smaller back, yeah. I think he's I think he has hit the wall. I mean, I was uh, he was one of my guys I was – the most down on last season going into last year as far as just like I I'm out and I'm not getting back in just because of you know what what round was a good value for Lev Bell last year like there wasn't one there's some players where there it's just going to be a bad pick and that that's what I think Shady is it, 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 Buffalo has <laughs> they have so many running backs on their team it's it's insane and it's what's unfortunate is like in other situations, a third round running back, you might be excited. And in Devin Singletary was one of those guys that he, he was, I mean, very polarized, but had huge plays in college. We would be projecting by the end of the year that Devin Singletary would be the starter of this team, and he certainly could be. He just has a lot more in front of him. He has a lot more guys that he has to actually pass. So, wow regularly you might be talking about halfway through the year okay Singletary might be able to start o- or take over but he might not be till the last 25 percent of the season yeah and you wonder how a team moves on from a big trade acquisition like McCoy and the, the overrated nature of the name it persists with the coaching staff too you might not give up on a guy like that as soon as you would think I can remember DeMarco Murray being a player that it took quite a bit of time to realize the inefficiencies of DeMarco Murray on an offense because of what they were. That can be one of the check marks against Devin Singletary taking the reins early. I, it, do, I do think it's kind of, you know, if, if McCoy had massive passing efficiency last year and just couldn't run the ball, I'd be like, okay, he can still contribute here. But you didn't see a rapport between him and Josh Allen. Right. And next year, just speaking for Devin Singletary, he will be the guy. I mean, McCoy's contract is done after this year. Frank Gore. 42. It, Frank Gore will still be playing in the league more than likely, but he won't be a Buffalo Bill. It's a one-year contract. I think T.J. Yeldon's is is. Did Frank Gore go low. to Buffalo because Fred Jackson? Because Fred Jackson had such they a long act- career. Well, what Fred Jackson is told that cryogenic about, cold up there in Buffalo? No, it's the the pool. It's the, from Wanted. Mm, oh, the res- in rest- the restoration. Pool. Yes, that's up in Buffalo. Yeah, huh? they found I've, it. I gotta stop by there next time I'm in Buffalo. Oh, um, a two out of ten for that joke. Yeah. Oh, wow. I yeah. thought it was at least a four. Are you going to start doing that on the show, Jay? Just put put a number down? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, you know, <laughs> I should really do it more like... Now, it's out of ten, but the numbers you put down are between two and four, right? <laughs> you can't even see it. We're going to have to get you some of those cards. <laughs> that you just what, hold like them the up Russian like, judge? Like the dunk contest. That's, in the oh, NBA. Oh. That's exactly what I'm thinking, dunk contest. Uh, Brooks, put that on the list. We're definitely get. We'll get two sets. And when you say one of those jokes... Jason and I will both hold those up. I like well, it. If you get the set, Brooks, and you can only get like one through four number-wise because it's cheaper, that's already, all you'll need. He already hit a, a 10 out of 10 today. He did? Yeah. What yeah. was that one? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's, go to, let's do a little ADP price check for a couple of Steelers. Dante Moncrief, Vance McDonald. I think there was a news report that came out earlier today about the ball being spread around. In Pittsburgh, with the absence of Antonio Brown, you've got Moncrief, you've got Washington. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Where is Moncrief? From to me, I'm going like you know, I would guess he's undrafted. Yeah, very very late, if not undrafted. We still aren't. Hmm. We because you're not sure. 
Sure. Is it James Washington or Dante Moncrief? I, and honestly, that's a if you like draft capital of James Washington, second round pick, his second year in the league, that still holds value for the team. But they gave Moncrief a, a decent two year deal. I think it was f- five million off. That's off the top of my head. I can look. But Dante Moncrief, I mean, like thirteen oh seven. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna guess like eight. Wow. Oh, nine. Oh, we have no. very different opinions of Dante. No, uh, he's 1308. Okay. That's where his draft Wait. place is right now. What did you guess, Mike? I guess 1300 something. Yeah, you said 1307. Wow. Yeah. You were, you were way <laughs> off. No, who, Jason, you have the I highest stayed under. of our group. Dante Moncrief is one of those. I'm going to use the la- one of my later picks in a best ball league on Dante Moncrief because he's going to have a monster play four times this year. Yeah, I mean, a best yeah. ball pick is great. He's got a very comparable skill set ability when it comes to like Martavis Bryant, who obviously dominated with Big Ben, just running that nine route faster than everybody else, getting down there, catching a touchdown, and he's going to slap the base. You know, in a redraft league, I'm not a big fan. When I say that, you know, eight oh nine or eight ten, whatever I said, that's what I assumed people might be putting on him. I'm not wanting to take the shot at. Uh, I've I've actually just kind of gotten to the place where I decided I'm not wanting to take the shot at the number two. You know, is, is it going to be James Washington? Is it going to be Dante Moncrief? Is it going to be Deontay? Deontay Johnson, it, yeah. I, it will I not be Deontay Johnson. I it, will be on record. Okay. Uh, and I will be on record just saying if a two comes out of the Steelers as a dominant, you know, if, 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 if a wide receiver two comes out and just dominates for fantasy football, he won't be on my team. Like I, because I'm not going to take the risk. So let's let's take the gamble there between James Washington, Deontay Johnson, and Dante Moncrief. Who do you think has the best chance? Moncrief to I agree. end up a solid number two. Yeah, Moncrief. take the vet who's had success before. Uh, you know, uh, it's a sneaky pickup for Pittsburgh. Probably better for their team than it is for fantasy. Yeah. Um, how about Vance McDonald, Steelers tight end? Where's his average draft position right now? Jason, you have him seven in your tight end rankings. Mike, eight. I have him nine. We both we all like him. He's our seventh by consensus. Uh, where do you think he's going in drafts, though? Because I think we all know he's probably in that value range. Maybe. I, I think he's going as a top ten yeah. tight end currently. So I would put him in the seventh round. I'll say 706. You say 706, yeah, I'm, Jason? I'm right about there. I'm going to go 707. Oh, I'm gonna you ta- jerk. I'm, I'm going to take the guess, under. I, and I don't know this one. I'm going to guess 805. Okay. Brooks, do you want to do the reveal on these for us? Ooh. Yes. Where's Vance going right now? Vance Dance is going 708. Oh, right. the winner is me. Tight end. That's right. right, right I did it. Tight end number nine. Tight so, end nine. Okay. Are you happy with that price? I mean, that's. I mean, it's, we should be. Yeah. It, to uh, ho- hopefully, me bringing this name up doesn't cast a giant shadow. But I mean, that was Trey Burton range last year, where you are you're still paying because I mean, a seventh round pick. You know, there's some wide receiver twos possibly still available. There's there's real depth you can be adding to your team instead of a tight end who still feels a bit like a flyer. But Vance McDonald also, to me, has an, a, a a very high ceiling. And we've seen it a few times with the Steelers, and he finally was able to to overcome and become the number one tight end on the depth chart. Yeah, Antonio Brown is going to turn into Moncrief, Deontay Johnson, James Washington, Vance McDonald. That's right. That's the Ante, uh, Antonio Brown target. You're not going to have a real target increase for Juju. You might have touchdown increase for Juju. Targets can't go up a lot. Those four guys are going to share them. Vance McDonald, he's priced exactly where I have him ranked, so I'm probably not jumping at him, but it'll just be team determination at that point in the and draft. And if you can take Vance McDonald and get a you know a, a decent portion, if not most, of what Jesse James, their former tight end, had, and then just get a nice, just like a, a little cut, a little give me 10 to 15% cut from Antonio Brown, Vance McDonald becomes – sensational in the target department yeah i mean that, that Who, who's gonna earn big ben's loyalty on that uh, offense I, yeah i don't know yeah i would put vance mcdonald ahead of the aforementioned dante moncrief as far as target uh you know the second in targets uh you know as a receiver um and just for a reminder I'm not, I'm not crazy about him here 
because to me, there's still a lot of other good running backs and wide receivers. While he's ranked kind of appropriately here, I, I would rather take more wide receivers and running backs that have better odds to be difference makers than I'm going to find in the double-digit rounds. Because you, you brought up the perfect name, Mike. Trey Burton, last year. Right. He was about this round, and guess what he did? He finished right there. He actually he, – he didn't disappoint – you know, last year, Trey Burton was the number seven tight end. He, there was, is he not, was gross, though. There's not a single – person who was happy they drafted no. Trey Burton last year. No, right. we liked him a lot. And he finished and this number is not, seven. The thing about this is, and we talked about it in our player profile in the UDK about Vance McDonald, the idea is this is not a hyper-athletic type of player to me. This is a player that didn't... Hmm. Vance? Yeah. He's got juice. He's got juice, but we know what he is. You're not talking about him walking into a new offense, being the... Trey Burton was the next Travis Kelsey because he never got enough play and enough... You've seen Vance McDonald on sure. the field okay. enough. So, yeah. saw him st stiff arm a guy out of I the league. I told you that that <laughs> that's going to color uh, that's going to color the athletic profile too much. He's not built, uh, and he didn't test in a in a fashion that was hyper impressive. He's no Trey Burton, is my point. So, from a physical specimen standpoint, he comps out as a Brent Selleck sure. type of player. He ran a four six nine. He was eighty six percentile and. Speed yeah, score. I'll take an 86 percent. That's speed his. Score. That's where he was. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. But last year he had 73 targets. That's 12th at the position. So that's what I'm saying. Where lose Jesse James, in, and he's and that wasn't only 15 games. There's why he's being selected. There is the 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 narrative that you have to paint for Vance McDonald to go from 73 to high 80s. I mean, it's it's not it's not a huge no, stretch. But if, if you get high 80s you are still going to be disappointed. And I think that's, you know, you had 77 for Trey Burton last year. I, I feel like if I don't get one of the top five, I'll I include, take, I I include O.J. Howard. targets from Ben Roethlisberger and it, over 90 targets from Mitch Trubisky. Sure, that's, that's fair. But my point for me this season in 2019, I would, I would include O.J. Howard and Evan Ingram as, you know, my top five tight ends that I'm willing to – to draft, and then if I don't get one of those guys, I'm pretty much out until one of my last picks, and I'll take whoever, I'll, some vet that drops super late, a Greg Golson or a. I'll grab Vance if he drops to the to the ninth, tenth round. Okay, uh, let's talk about Saints running back Latavius Murray. La, la, Latavius. We've got him at consensus thirty two. I think the one of the more interesting things to talk about with Latavius is what if something happens sure. to Alvin Kamara. Kamara's had some concussion issues before. You know, he's been pretty durable. He's been a monster in the red zone. But when you talk about the value you get with Latavius, you get you get the side running back numbers in New Orleans, and then you get this insane upside if something happened to Alvin Kamara. Where do you think Latavius is going? We have him as our consensus 32. Uh, I think he's going in the middle of the seventh. I'll go 706, and I think he is a great value there for what I'm looking for. I think he is more of an eighth-round player. I will go 802. I will say, uh, well, Brooks, you ruined it. You ruined it. <laughs> oh, Brooks. I highlighted it on the screen while I was looking at it, yeah, so I'm time. out. Uh, um, and also when you're – Seventh round. 707, is that right, Brooks? Good job, Andy. All 707. Right. Yeah. Wait, yeah. did you give him that one? This is, this yes. is hogwash. I think when you're talking about the upside of Latavius Murray, you are not properly accounting for Javorius Allen. I disagree. Yeah, I, I mean, think we are properly I, accounting for Buck Allen. I am being facetious. Yeah, Buck Allen, people want to know, does it matter? No. 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 Not at all. No. If you look at what Mark Ingram has been able to do, and you can go back. This isn't just Mark Ingram. You can go back and look when Mark Ingram was the one, and there were other twos. You can go look before Mark Ingram was in the league and how they would use multiple backs. Sean Payton and Drew Brees have great running back as a team, numbers at the end of the year. Alvin Kamara will absolutely get the lion's share, but there's so much left over in that offense that I want the running back to. There's not a lot of teams that you can do that, but you, Latavius Murray will be a weekly streamable, you know, flex position type of guy where he's got a good, decent chance at a, at a touchdown. 
And like you said, Andy, the upside is there. He's not a handcuff at all. He's a standalone player with massive upside. When on our last show, we did the ultimate draft tips and we were looking at some market share numbers. It was surprising to see how much work Kamara got in the tin zone. So there, it's not like Latavius is walking into a situation where Ingram got every carry inside the 10. They need a goal line back, and it has to be Latavius Murray. So I don't – even though that's, there's a possibility they use him more there because they just – you know, he's had success there in the past, I don't think it's a guarantee that he's the goal line back. It's just a matter of what Jason said. This is a team that traditionally leads the league in rushing touchdowns, period. What he meant to say was there's a possibility that – Alvin Kamara rips off a huge run. It gets tired. It gets tired. It gets taken down to the two, and then he's then he's a little winded, and right. then they'll send Latavius Murray in. <laughs> All right. Let's go on to James White, Patriots running back James White, one of the most owned players on championship teams last year because of where you got him. You got him at a value. Right now, Mike, you are bodying James White. Yes. I w- You've been saying it on the show for a while. Jason and I both have him inside our top 24. You've got him outside your top 40. That's I I beseech you, Mike. I beseech you get on board with James White. He's going to This is No. A, this <laughs> I don't have any beseech music. This is I, not You need some Jesus Christ superstar. To, oh, uh, this is not going to work for you. No. James White's going to have an excellent year. Yes. No. He will yeah. not. I'm going to say he's being drafted at six ten, and I will scoop him up like crazy. I think he is being completely overdrafted. I I'm going to guess he's a fifth round pick. I will say, my, my ranking of him that's just where he landed with the stats that I gave him. I think there is a a very reasonable expectation that he outperforms the ranking that I have given him. But with that ranking, I'm saying I am not paying up for you because I. I agree with you guys. I think he's going to be going in the fifth round, the sixth round, and his situation was literally as perfect as it could possibly get for a complete statistical outlier of a season for James White. Not that he's a bad player, but he just everything lined up for him in a very magical way, and that's not going to happen again. Where's he going, Brooks? 604. Yeah, 604. Too, early. too early for me. It's just it, it's it's extreme value for if you're in a PPR league. Keep in mind, I mean, if you're not in a PPR league, if you're a standard league, James White is far less valuable because make no mistake, he's not a running back. He's a wide receiver for this offense. They use him from the backfield as a wide receiver. He could be, you know, I expect him to be north of 100 targets. You know, Julian Edelman and James White are going to dominate. It's the thing is is it's pr- it's a pretty far fall from last year, a championship-winning season to go from... He finishes the number eight running, sure. running back last year. So I I, I, mean, just, I can bring up my argument again. of, of you, well, no, Like you're saying, that you expect him well over 100 targets. He's done that once in his entire career. But, but the most recent history that we have is that he's a foundational player for Brady, and Brady's there, and the offense is the same, and you only lost Gronk. So why would they go away from what happened last year. Now, maybe he's not number eight because of opportunity, but why would he be outside of the top 20, 25? Because of, because of how much he was actually used last year due to injuries from Sony Michelle, due to injuries from Rex Burkhead, who those guys are both back, and they added a third-round running back in Damian Harris. I just I do not see a world. The, but what the, about when we say we beseech you? What about the, that? The Here, ar- Russ. <laughs> the argument that I will that I will accept because th- there's always work for for all of these players, you know when you're expecting great things, there's always the world where it doesn't work out. And if it doesn't work out for James White, I think it's going to be because of Damian Harris. You know, you saw Rex Burkhead when he was on the field was not as good for James White. That's the argument I would encourage you to stick with for your <laughs> terrible uh, anti it's, James it's, White. It's part takes. of my his his career high in targets before last year was 86 it which is matter. still just it just does saying. matter no it doesn't it doesn't targets. matter when you're 26 years old and, and you and you just i why would the team go do you think that the the patriots are going to the books and going whoa wait a second this year was an outlier we better go back to whatever he did when he was a younger player and we didn't trust him as much no but i think that they have other running backs who are good on the team i mean like to me okay so where we we can transition it to where do you feel about Sony Michelle? Are you still as high on Sony no. Michelle? 
No, no, no. And my rankings reflect that. When, okay. When push came to shove on Sony and Michelle, because they both like to me, they both can't be there. No, they're not. If no, they they both can be there because one doesn't. One's catch touchdowns. Passes one's pass catching. All. But I mean, so eighty six targets or whatever that you know that's that would have been the sixth best last season. I mean, that those are great numbers. I you don't have to be at one hundred and twenty three. You know, to to be there. Sure, but eighty six targets is great. But he also had five rushing touchdowns last year, of which he hadn't scored a rushing touchdown since two thousand fifteen. Like, that's that's not happening. And that's again. why. But that's why Jason and I have him at twenty one and twenty four. Right. I'm not have eight. Him up at eight. Not eight where he finished. Uh, for what it's worth, Sony is one spot behind. So I actually have him back to back, twenty four, twenty five. All right. So um, we can move on. We better move on. The Browns combo, Jarvis Landry, David Njoku. Where do you think those guys are going? Jarvis Landry, David Njoku. Oof. Njoku we have as our 10th ranked tight end, mostly on the power of Jason's firm number six. And then Jarvis Landry, I've got him at 30. I don't you, know what you to do You guys have him. him at 45 and 40. What's crazy about Landry is he, had, he actually had a very high market share yes. of the offense last year. But then you mix in like a uh, Baker Mayfield that was getting better and uh, advancing and getting more freedom. So and even with that market share, Jarvis was no, he was bad. Was there? No, I know that's that's the scary part about the Jarvis argument. Now I, I've got to. I should have done this for James White, but Brooks, what format is the ADP? Because Jarvis, that you know, that's per, you know, it's always going to make a big difference. Uh, ADP and rankings are both half half PPR. Okay, so. My thought on average draft position for Jarvis, I have him the highest at 30. I am guessing that Jarvis Landry is going in the fifth round. I'm going to guess the beginning of the seventh. I'm going to go 701. And uh, where where did – I'm going to split did, the difference. Where did You're going sixth round? Yeah. I'm going to go, go 605. Where's he at, Brooks? Fifth round, 505. Yeah. Why did, he's going off the board as the wide receiver 22. So according to all of our rankings, he's pretty overdrafted. Gross. Right now, yeah, I, I would not, I would not touch him there. I mean, you're going to, you've got a player who's not a touchdown machine. He has always needed to have volume to be. I mean, he's great, and he's going to be great for the for the Browns. But from a fantasy standpoint, he's not the one. He's not even going to be close to the one when it comes to targets. He's, he's not, not Neo. Be, it's not going to be like 135 to 125 targets between Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry. Odell Beckham's going to be, you know, 150 and to 120, 115. And if you're not getting, if you're working close to the line of scrimmage like Jarvis does, you don't get the touchdowns. I was actually going to bring that up. He His average uh, per reception did go up last year from 8.8 .8 to 12 in Cleveland. His receptions took a precipitous drop from 112 down to 81. But my about point the is, same yardage. he's not going to be doing that with Odell Beckham there. That's you know what I mean, like him being the guy down the field. That's they what were using him the way that they're going to use Odell Beckham this season. I I, had, I would imagine a very similar season for Jarvis Landry. Well, one that you were disappointed in because the thing eighty one for nine fifty and four. I mean, that's he was wide receiver nineteen and half point. So he was wide receiver nineteen and half point. But if you look at how he got there, the percentage of good weeks versus bad weeks. I think he had a couple monster games. I'll look that up, but I I don't remember people being happy owning Jarvis last year. I think he's interesting though because now his draft position right now In it doesn't fact. reflect a discount for Beckham arriving, right? Right. So that well, that I mean, I guess a like Jason, you thought he was a seventh fourth. round pick, and you didn't even sound happy. Right. I would have been super happy with Jarvis as a seventh round. I'll pick. consider him in the seventh. <laughs> You'll give him some consideration. A little bit of excellence. Um, okay. All right. Uh, you guys want to move on to another name? Are we doing Njoku? Oh, that's right. In, where Where did uh, remind me where Vance was? The ADP was seventh round. Let's see. So he'll be in yes. front of Vance. So seven oh eight was Vance. That's exactly what I feel. Is he should be in front of Vance from the populace. So I'll go seven oh five. But he he should be right. By I'll go seven oh one. Uh, yeah, six ten. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Brooks? Seven twelve. Oh, I wait. Again. Hold on. Tight end ten. So he's going. He's behind. going after Vance. People are dancing. People are doing the Vance dance. I don't blame him. 
Look, it's so, our, it's your fault, Mike. I don't um, blame him. I, I don't. I, you like Njoku a lot more. No, not not. That's what I was going to bring up. It's it's not really true. I mean, I I said earlier my top five that I include Evan Ingram and OJ Howard along with the the three names you know in Kittle, Ertz, and Kelsey. The drop between those five and my sixth is nothing enormous. No, that the, uh, the difference between six and ten or twelve is nothing. That's yeah, where that's your five, is Ingram your five or is Howard your five? Uh, Ingram is my five. So it's one of those where, um, yes, my ordered ranking says I'm high on Njoku. That's if the touchdowns fall his way. I mean, that's really – and that's from – That's what from, that range is anyway. Exactly. From Njoku on, it's just take your best shot. And so Targets-wise, Njoku and Jarvis, massive differences between first and second half of the season. Jarvis is first half pace, 186 targets. Second half pace, 110. In Joku's first half, one twenty. Second half, seventy four. First half, spreading no the ball game. around. That, well, that's the point, right? It's it's Baker. Tyrod was targeting those players more often. Baker was spreading the ball around more often. So it, it you wonder if the situation in Cleveland is actually very similar to the situation in Pittsburgh, where you have Juju, you've got Beckham, they're your kind of solidified guarantees, but then. Uh, agnostic targets after that from the quarterbacks because Baker likes to spread it around. I mean, Jarvis You've got was, Callaway, was still get a Jarvis. Lot of targets. Yeah, but you you know you you do have um, Beckham's going to soak his up, and then you've got Njoku, you've got Jarvis, you've got um, you know Duke, you've got right. Callaway. I just wonder if predicting that number two, guaranteeing the number two, would you take the same approach with the with the number two target in Cleveland that you would take? Uh, in Pittsburgh, like you were talking about earlier, or do you feel uh, like because Jarvis is so... No, I, I feel like Jarvis has established himself as more of a target shorty than, say, a Dante Moncrief. It's the exact opposite type of player. One is a deep down the field, catch a bomb touchdown. The other is right across the middle or take a screen and uh, you know get eight or nine yards of reception. Uh, so, no, I, I would still rather have Jarvis in that situation just based on Jarvis's talent. All right, let's get into the mailbag. 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 All right, we love helping the Foot Clan out. You heard a Foot Clan member introduce the show from China. Oh, the bonjour. <laughs> oh, bonjour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we have a new perk over at jointhefoot.com. Um, if you support us over there, you got the opportunity to leave us a, uh, a show intro. This show is all about the Foot Clan, your league, your team, your players, and here's your questions. Go to the website, click submit a question. You can also leave us a question via voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. Today, we've got a question from Nathan in Texas. He says, hey, ballers, huge fan of the show. You often mention when a receiver moves from playing outside into the slot. What are the fantasy implications for a slot receiver versus a guy who lines up on the outside? Positive, neg uh, negative, better for PPR. Yes, it's they're going to get more targets, and theoretically you're talking shorter plays, you know, lower yards per reception. Uh, I, heard, I heard theoretically. <laughs> oh, very nice. Uh, and and your, your, your touchdown opportunities do tend to go down. Yeah, and it, it – very Those rare to have a slot receiver with double-digit touchdowns. Almost right. never happens. Yes, and and sometimes when you see those seasons that look like they're going to happen, you know that happened a, a little while ago with uh, Crowder. You know, it's like, oh, he, he he does get touchdowns from the slot. Then as time goes on, you go, oh, he doesn't. He just had a it's, good. It's the pace. same with Jarvis. Jarvis had that one he massive had a nine, season. I think he had a nine touchdown. Yeah, he did. Season. But other than that, it's he gets you but four. It, touchdowns. it does. It does depend a little bit on which team you know the, yeah Larry Larry represent like Larry Fitzgerald in Arizona he's been running out of the slot for a while he still was the best touchdown catcher on the team didn't mean a whole lot but um yeah traditionally you see a player with a different route tree a lot of underneath routes um there are certain players like Tyler Lockett who had a lot of yards after the catch last year who if the best wide receiver on the team is in that position you can have more confidence I think I think we've been in a world where fantasy owners have tried to turn every slot receiver into what Wells Welker represented for fantasy owners years ago, and that's just is more often than not not the you know the case. Right. What 
the absolute best scenario is when you have a superstar wide receiver like Julio Jones, who mo- he predominantly plays on the outside, but then your OC is actually smart and moves yeah. them around the formation, and, and then before the defense realizes what, what happens is, oh, crap, Julio Jones is in the slot. T.Y. Hilton's in the slot. Because you're now playing against the third cornerback on the team instead right. of a top two Keenan guy. Keenan Allen, Adam Thielen, right. they, they do that a lot. All right, let's get into a voicemail question. Hey, Ballers, this is Eric from New Jersey. Really need your help. The whole league is having a huge argument. What do you do in between the time of the rookie draft and the regular season? Because there's a lot of issues between when players should be dropped, when roster sizes should be cut down, and what happens with teams that have 30 or more people on their rosters are still able to pick up free agents and such. Let me know your answer. Hope you get the question. Have a good one. You gonna help him yeah, put the pitchforks uh, down? Uh, absolutely. I'll 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 grab my uh, torch up and tell you to put your pitchforks down because I know we've had, you know, in in the dynasty leagues we've been in the same conversations, the same debates, the same. Oh, I don't want to drop my players yet. I don't want to. You know, this is a dynasty league. This is a league where it's you. You're not always gonna know the information. You can't wait like a redraft and draft right before the 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 draft. So, in my opinion, and I assume in our opinion. Uh, but I'll only speak for myself here. When you have your draft, you've got to make those roster cuts right then. If you, if you're adding four players to your team and you're not expanding, you know, in the you're rookie post rookie draft, post rookie draft, draft, you've got to get rid of four spots and and open it up right then. You don't get to hold on to them and do that jazz. As soon as that roster is inputted right after the draft, it should be open season for all trades, all waiver wire. You know, if you want to make a different, I know we've got a, an off season fab budget. That the you know going into week one of the NFL season it resets you get a brand new hundred dollars on your fab budget for in season, uh, but the whole point of playing in a dynasty is to have off season action. So you don't want to have a l- elongated lockdown of right. your league where you're not talking trades when you aren't experiencing the fun of what it means to have a dynasty team, and if you know. There was some different opinions in our league, too, about, oh, do you want to wait for the rookie draft for a long time? Well, you can do that, but mm-hmm. and maybe you get a little bit more information or things like that, but ultimately you want the most open season, so to speak. And if you, this is what a taxi squad is for. If you are one of those people that is adamant on you got to have, I don't want to drop anybody. Well, then you have a taxi squad where your rookies can go and sit and develop, but if they're on the taxi squad, that means you can't actually play them on a week-to-week basis without moving someone up and dropping someone at that time. The only caveat I will say to my opinion of do everything early, do everything quick, have it always open, have all transactions going, is if you're looking to start one up, the startup draft is just so important. If you want to hold off and wait until you know the same time of year that you've got redrafts going where you've got maximum information and nobody's going to draft someone that – gets injured and their entire career arc changes um, and they can't get rid of them forever, then I'm then I'm cool with that. All right, one more voicemail question. Hey, fantasy footballers. Love hey. you guys. Love the show. I've been going back and forth on this decision all summer. been trying to figure out if I should keep Julio Jones or James Conner in my half-point PPR league. Thank you. Hmm. Oof. You are correct, sir. That is a rough one. Uh, I'm, I am I am on Team Connor that I think that James Connor will be the guy and more so of just if he is the guy, he's the guy. I don't think that Mike Tomlin is going to use a platoon. The people that have to beat out James Connor in between Jalen Samuels and Benny Snell, I do just don't think that one of those two guys can do it. However, it lives in the world of probability of things that actually could happen. What can't happen is that someone takes over Julio Jones of the Atlanta Falcons of being an elite wide receiver and render Julio Jones completely without value or with very little value. Five straight years of at least 1,400 receiving yards for Julio Jones. Julio is 100% the safe pick and with I mean he's an elite player but James Conner can be he's at a more valuable position yes and that's what the that's where the debate lies and what you think you'll be able to do at the position in your draft 
I think that says a lot. Yeah. It, can you it, get a can you get a great running back? Because then I'd go Julio. Yeah, it's it's funny. I looked up their ADP just now, and uh, right now the average draft position is one eleven for Julio Jones and one eleven for James Conner. So this how is, is a, this possible? This is a true uh, decision where you've got to go and pick one of those guys. If I'm on the clock, I am taking Julio Jones right now. Let's say we get into the season. It's preseason. James Conner. They're they're not even letting him play because they said James Conner is the starting running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, then it would depend on the what the rest of the league's doing. So to Andy's point earlier, if you can find out who's being kept, and if everybody's keeping a running back, yeah. that's going to make it difficult for me to grab a top running back. Then I'll follow suit and grab and and keep Connor. Otherwise, if some people are going running back, some people are going wide receiver. Travis Kelsey's someone's keeper, and Pat Mahomes is someone's keeper. Then I'll take Julio and I'll draft another great running back. Pristine deal of the day. All right, as we close things out, we've got a pristine deal of the day for you. Yesterday on pristineauction.com, A.J. Green signed Cincinnati Bengals photo 55. Oh, <laughs> oh! We should just find whatever went for $55 the day before. <laughs> and then uh, be surprised every single time surprised. it happens. Oh, wow. Uh, Jerry Rice, by the way, signed logo football. A little old school bonus here. Yesterday, $85 for a signed Jerry Rice football Father's Day is coming up, That's people. a pretty sweet gift. When you sign up on Pristine Auction, use the registration code BALLERS, you get $5 for free. Mm. That Sounds means we're going to have to find things that went for 60 bucks. Oh, because then it, then we take it down to uh, 55 I see. Doing a little mathematics there, genius. Hey, thank you for tuning in. We will see you on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. All right, Foot Clan, a reminder this Father's Day, give Dad a gift packed with the Omaha steaks he craves. Go to omahasteaks.com and enter the code FANTASY in the search bar for 74% off of the Father's Day Steak Fix Gift Package. That is a $235 value now for just $59.99. This offer ends soon. Go to omahasteaks.com and type fantasy in the search bar to get the Father's Day Steak Fix package today.